Hello there. Hey Star Wars fans, welcome back to DKOT Star Wars. I'm your host James, also known as the Dark Knight of Thrones. This is the first time I've ever publicly shared any of my Star Wars fan fiction. Most of the stories that have come to me have been what-if scenarios, and this particular scenario is one I've thought about for some time. What if, at the end of Revenge of the Sith, Yoda honored Obi-Wan's request to take on the Emperor, while the centuries-old Jedi Master took on the new Sith Apprentice, once known as Anakin Skywalker? As the scenario plays out in my mind, it takes us down a much different road on our journey. So, let us start this alternate storyline at the moment the decision was made which of the Sith Lords our Jedi would be facing. Wait, Master, there's something I must know, Obi-Wan said to the aged Jedi Master. If into the security recordings you go, only pain will you find, Yoda responded. He could sense the unease in the young Jedi Master. For just a moment, Yoda pondered why Obi-Wan had to see that which he already knew. The moment was brief, however, as Master Yoda's attunement to the Force enlightened him to that which he already knew, that Obi-Wan had to see for himself what he was sensing. For if he did not, he would not trust his own feelings on the matter, due to his unbreakable love for Anakin. I must know the truth, Master, Obi-Wan said as he dialed through the recording hologram to find what he was seeking, though Obi-Wan already knew in his heart what he would find. As Obi-Wan looked on at the recordings in horror, Yoda's heart sank again, just as it had when he felt young Skywalker's turn to the dark side. It was not a moment he wished to relive, but for the sake of Obi-Wan and the closure it would bring, the Jedi Master suffered through the unbearable feelings once more. It can't be. It can't be, Obi-Wan said in disbelief, but the hologram recording had only confirmed what he already felt through a tremor in the Force, that his former apprentice and his dearest and closest friend had given himself over to the dark side. I can't watch anymore, Obi-Wan said as if asking the Force itself to mercifully take these feelings from him. Destroy the Sith, we must, Yoda stated so matter-of-factly as he himself tried to bury his feelings deep down. Obi-Wan, feeling a despair he had never felt before, not even at the death of his old master Qui-Gon Jinn, spoke up. Send me to kill the Emperor. I will not kill Anakin, Yoda replied. To fight this Lord Sidious, strong enough, you are not. Immediately, Obi-Wan interjected with a second objection. Master, I may not be strong enough to kill this Sith Lord, but I know in my very being that I do not have it within me to kill my brother. Yoda slowly closed his eyes as he took a deep breath. Reaching out with the Force, he sought answers to the mysteries of the future, which are always in motion. Clouded by the dark side, the future is. I cannot kill him, Master. You must understand. To kill Anakin would be to kill a part of myself. The man you once knew as Anakin Skywalker, Yoda replied. Dead already, he is. This Lord Vader he has become, consumed by the dark side of the Force. Yoda took another deep breath as he lowered his head, almost as if disappointed with himself for not being able to sense their inevitable fate. Exhaling deeply, he raised his eyes to meet Obi-Wan's. The Force is your ally, and a powerful ally it is. Your training you will remember. Powerful this Emperor is. Fail, we cannot. Yoda turned to exit, walking more slowly than usual. Master, how will you find him? Obi-Wan asked. Guide me, the Force has. Where to begin, I know. Master Yoda, Padme proclaimed, failing to hide the surprise in her voice. What brings you here? Yoda, sensing Padme's unease, turns to formalities to quiet her mind. Good to see who it is, Senator. Always the pleasure of mine is, he said with a quaint smile. It's always a pleasure to see you, Yoda, she returned with less anxiety. How can I be of service to you? Can I have 3PO get you something? Thank you, Padme. But refreshment I do not require. A sad heart it is that brings me here today. A sad heart? Why? she asked. Terrible news. Concern your husband, it does. My... she was stunned. How could Yoda have known that she and Anakin had wed? Realizing quickly there was no fooling the Jedi Master, she continued. What's wrong? Has something happened to Anakin? Pain, it brings me to say, changed your husband has. No more is the man you knew. And in a rare moment of visible emotion, Yoda swallowed as he felt the lump growing in his throat. He continued, Turn to the dark side he has. Slaughtered. Younglings he has. A beacon of evil he has become. The dark side? Younglings, she said in disbelief. Not Anakin. She stood there, stunned, unable to process what the Jedi Master had told her. No. No, I... I can't believe it, Padme said quietly, but clearly in shock. What of our child? She said, speaking more to herself than Yoda. He would never do this to us. Why would he leave us? Twins you have. No disease. 
No, she stated in what was now an almost catatonic state. I was going to tell him when he returned from the mission that... She paused. Palpatine is the Sith, she said with sudden realization. He did this. Serve you well, your feelings do. Do you plan to kill him? She asked sharply, almost snapping at him. Destroyed the Sith must be. No more is Skywalker. Consumed him, this Darth Vader has. Yoda said in the gentlest way he could. Sorry, I truly am. The two of them exchanged kind but sad looks. The Jedi Master bowed his head before turning slowly to take his exit. Once the door to her chambers had closed, 3PO approached Padme. Is there anything I can do for you, my lady? Padme started to cry. At first it was just a tear, but she could no longer hold back the pain she felt inside. As she began to weep for her husband, her children, and the love she had for Anakin, 3PO's experience taught him it was best to leave her be. Oh my, I feel so helpless, 3PO said in disappointment, realizing he could not help the woman he had come to enjoy serving. As 3PO was retiring to Padme's bedchambers to power down, Yoda was safely securing himself away in the cargo hold of Padme's ship. Sometimes it seemed to Obi-Wan that this ability he learned from his old master Qui-Gon had become all too easy. He did not want to take it for granted. As the two guards came toward him in the corridor, he waved his hand and stated, You are relieved of your duty. In unison, the two guards reported back, I am relieved of my duty, and continued to walk directly past Master Kenobi. You will drop your blaster, he added while they could still hear him in a low tone. I will, I will drop, drop my, my blaster. blaster, they repeated once again in unison as they simultaneously dropped their blasters to the deck. As he approached the chamber, he was curious why there weren't more guards posted outside. Perhaps the Emperor felt that the Jedi wouldn't come for him here. That was if any Jedi had survived Order 66. Using the Force, Obi-Wan opened the hatch and as the two members of the Red Guard inside drew their weapons, Obi-Wan in one swift move drew and ignited his lightsaber, first beheading one guard and spinning around to remove the head of the second. Master Kenobi, the Emperor said from behind his desk as if simply making a statement of fact. I would have expected you to seek out Lord Vader. Your feelings betray you, Master Kenobi. Your faith in your old apprentice is your weakness. Your arrogance is yours, Obi-Wan replied quickly. The Emperor wanted to unleash the power of lightning from his hands at the Jedi Master, but seeing Obi-Wan's lightsaber still ignited, it reminded him of his battle with Mace Windu, filling him with a blind rage, and now he wanted to destroy the Jedi at his own game. With a lightsaber. Sidious spun across the top of his desk just as he had when the four Jedi Masters had come to arrest him. Obi-Wan, skilled in Form 3 with the lightsaber thanks to his experience in the Clone Wars, began circling the Dark Lord of the Sith while deflecting every ravaging blow that the Sith Lord threw in his direction. Obi-Wan tried to relax, to help his Sorisu style of lightsaber combat be more effective, but Lord Sidious just kept coming at him faster and stronger, more aggressively than Obi-Wan had ever seen. He was tensing up and he knew this was bad. Sidious was now forcing Obi-Wan straight back, and the Jedi Master couldn't find sure fitting to control his opponent's center. Soon enough, the Sith Lord had Obi-Wan backed into a corner, and that's when Obi-Wan heard it. Obi-Wan, use the Force, Obi-Wan. It was Qui-Gon Jinn, his old master. In that moment, Obi-Wan felt an energy come over him like nothing he had ever felt before, and he reached out with his feelings. And as he reached out with his feelings, the Force emanated from him like a powerful blast, knocking both the Jedi Master and the Sith Lord violently into the walls on either side of the chamber. Obi-Wan could feel himself starting to fade away. Had he hit his head? Did the Force take that much out of him? He did not know, but soon he found himself in another place. Another realm. Obi-Wan. There was the voice of his old master again. He slowly began to open his eyes. As he blinked them into focus, he saw nothing around him. Am I dead? He spoke aloud to himself. No one has ever really gone, Qui-Gon replied. Qui-Gon, am I really hearing you? Yes, Obi-Wan. Why can't I see you? Why can't I see anything? Am I dead? Not at the moment, Qui-Gon said as all of the stars in the galaxy suddenly became visible to Obi-Wan. I hope this is more pleasing for you as we talk. I still can't see you, Master, Obi-Wan replied. I am speaking to you from the Netherworld, Qui-Gon said, a place where space and time do not exist. I am a part of the Living Force. You are unconscious at the moment, as is your adversary. I took this opportunity to speak with you. Obi-Wan, still feeling the pain in his heart of Anakin's turn to the dark side, confided in his old master. Anakin has turned to the dark side. This Sith Lord has warped his mind, Master. He was supposed to be the Chosen One. 
When the living interpret prophecy, Obi-Wan, they often do so with their own self-interest in mind. Anakin is the Chosen One. He is lost, but there is good in him. But he was supposed to bring balance to the Force, Obi-Wan countered, not leave it in darkness. Qui-Gon told him gently, though he is lost now, he has indeed brought balance to the Force. At this very moment, a battle is occurring between two Sith and two Jedi. Though he use anger to hide his pain now, there will be one who will show him the light he still has inside. Master Yoda? Obi-Wan asked. No. There is another, Qui-Gon stated. It is already written in the Journal of the Wills. The Wills, Master? You will know them soon enough, Obi-Wan. They already know you, and have taken great interest. But first, you must destroy this Sith Lord. I don't know if I can, Master. He's more powerful than anything I've ever seen, Obi-Wan argued. He is not more powerful than fate. Use the Force, Obi-Wan, and help bring peace to the galaxy. Before Obi-Wan could say another word, he found himself coming to in the physical realm. He and Sidious, both raising at the same time, gave no thoughts to where their lightsabers were, and immediately drew everything they could from the Force. Lord Sidious, cackling, aimed his decrepit hands at the Jedi Master as he expelled the blast of lightning. Obi-Wan breathed deep and simply let the Force flow from his hands. As the lightning and the invisible Force met between them, the ground beneath them shook violently. The Sith, now cackling louder, drawing on more anger toward the Jedi, toward all Jedi. Letting hate be his guiding factor, gave of his feelings more aggressively than he ever had. Obi-Wan, for the first time in his life, as a Jedi, as a man, felt truly one with the Force becoming more relaxed and more accepting of whatever fate may bestow, reached out with every fiber of his being. The complete counterbalancing forces could no longer maintain any stability, and as each of them, the Sith and the Jedi, dug for that one final push, the explosion around them could be heard throughout all the echoes of Coruscant. While the explosion didn't travel as far as those who could hear it, the Senate chambers were completely destroyed along with 42 of the neighboring decks where Obi-Wan breathed his last breath and eliminated the Sith Lord. As the Naboo Royal Cruiser came out of hyperspace in the Mustafar system, Padme could feel the stress taking over. Her heart was beating like it wanted to get out of her chest. How could Anakin have done this? She thought to herself. There must be some mistake. Her thoughts could go no further. She no longer knew what to think. It was as if everything inside of her was fighting to keep her heart from going out. When the cruiser touched down, Anakin, or was it just Darth Vader now, even he wasn't sure, came running to the landing deck to meet his wife as he had seen her ship approach. Before she exited the ship, Padme slipped away a dagger inside of the cloak she threw on before exiting. She didn't know what she was going to do with it, or even why she needed it, but for the first time in her life, she didn't feel safe around her husband. Padme! Padme! He yelled to her. What are you doing here? He asked as he embraced his wife after she ran out onto the landing platform. Anakin, I heard terrible things. I... There is nothing but great news, my love, he interrupted. I have brought peace to the Republic. Padme stood there for a moment, stunned. She had never heard this tone in his voice before. Even when he told her of his slaughter of the Sand People, it was from a place of pain, with tears in his eyes. She understood his anger in that moment, after he so helplessly lost his mother to her captors. This was different. This was... frightening. What do you mean you've brought peace to the Republic? She asked, as she could feel herself slowly moving her hand closer to the dagger she had hidden in her cloak. Anakin grinned. The Separatist leaders have been destroyed. The war is over. As Padme looked her husband's face over, she saw the evil in him that she didn't want to believe existed. Hesitantly, she asked, Did you kill younglings? Anakin, still grinning in the same sinister style, replied, my love, did you? I demand you answer me, she asserted. <sighs> Have you been talking to Obi-Wan? He asked as if dismissively. Answer me, she stated. The Jedi Order were planning on taking over the Senate. They had to be eradicated. You did, she said just as stunned as she was angry. Now that she had confirmed the truth, she still did not want to believe it, but Anakin's actions had given her no choice. She quickly drew the blade from inside her cloak and held it up to Anakin's throat. Again, Anakin grinned. He stared into his wife's eyes with a gaze that now created fear, where it once created love. Padme dropped the knife to the deck. As she began to weep, she cried out, Anakin! Annie! How could you? 
Though she had now seen the darkness in the man who was once her husband, she could not bring herself to kill him. She loved him. The kind little slave boy she met on Tatooine so many years ago had to still be in there somewhere, always ready to protect her from the next sandstorm that life might bring. As Lord Vader moved in to embrace his wife, he felt a presence that radiated of light, even in a place strong with the dark side of the Force like Mustafar. Yoda, Anakin proclaimed much like his recently destroyed master had when Obi-Wan came for him. You brought him here, he said, almost growling at Padme. No. No, I swear. Liar! You brought him here to kill me! Young Skywalker. Or should I call you Darth Vader? You turned her against me! He said as if having an epiphany. You turned her against me! He shouted as he used the force to strangle Padme. Done that yourself, you have. For a Sith Lord you have become. Release her, you will. The young Sith Lord, suddenly realizing his wife couldn't breathe, released the grip he had of her through the Force. Sensing that she was still alive, he turned his attention immediately back to Yoda, as he knew he would need to devote all of his focus to the old Jedi Master. You never wanted me to have power. You always held me back. If you and Obi-Wan weren't so afraid of my power, if your ego wasn't so huge, I could have learned how to save my wife from certain death. Only through the dark side can I achieve a greater power. Only evil have you become, Yoda interjected. From my point of view, the Jedi are evil. If you and the rest of the Jedi Council weren't so busy keeping secrets and denying the love we know we were meant to have, then maybe I wouldn't have had to turn to the Sith Lord for help. But with his help, I have discovered the true nature of the Force. Truly lost you are. You felt the tremor. Don't deny it, my old master. I am one with the dark side, and now I will make things the way that I want them. Sidious is dead. I am the Emperor now. At an end, your rule is. Yoda proclaimed as he shot forward, dropping his cane and igniting his lightsaber. Darth Vader drawing on his anger as he was immediately on the defensive. Force pushed Yoda, but he was able to bounce off the hull of the ship and spring back at the former Jedi. But Vader was swift and strong with the dark side of the Force, and neither the old Jedi nor the young Sith could get the upper hand. Back and forth they fought, moving along the platform as they went, ending up in the control room at the end of the platform. Yoda quickly turned off his lightsaber and pointed both of his hands at Vader as he reached out with the Force in an attempt to knock his adversary off of his feet. Sensing this, Vader reached out with his left hand, and as Yoda called upon the Force, Vader's hand sent lightning to meet it. Yoda, unable to continue pushing back against the strong dark side powers, focused his energy on absorbing the power. Yoda's success enraged the new Emperor as he leapt forward, igniting his lightsaber to strike down the Jedi Master. Yoda practically flew out of the way, igniting his own lightsaber as Vader struck down on the controls, causing a malfunction of the mining equipment. Before sprinting out of the room, Yoda jumped down to a lower platform, but Lord Vader was fast on his trail. They continued to duel to a draw as the heavy mining equipment around them fell into the lava, doing everything they could to keep their balance and not fall into the molten rock, while keeping focus on one another proved to be the biggest challenge either of them had ever faced in battle. Soon their fight would come to a standstill, as they both landed on hovering droids above the river of lava. Yoda, drawing on everything he could from the Force, gave one strong flying strike at the man he once knew as Anakin Skywalker, Jedi Knight. Sensing how close they were to a cooler edge of the rock, the young Sith jumped from the droid and onto the high ground as he avoided the Jedi Master's blow. Taught you well, Obi-Wan has, Yoda said, almost as if in admiration. Something he certainly would have if his heart hadn't broken when young Skywalker turned to the dark side. Just as Vader was about to unleash Force Lightning on Yoda a second time, a ship appeared above the two combatants, shining down a blinding light. As the hatch on the underside of the Carillion Corvette opened, Yoda gave everything he had left to Force Jump into the ship. I will fight you, Yoda! I will search every crevice of this galaxy for you! The anger in Emperor Vader boiled him in new ways. He would not rest until Order 66 was complete. Removing his comlink from inside his cuirass, he signaled the nearest, what was now formerly Republic, station. Commander, this is Emperor... He thought for a moment. This is Emperor Vader. Have Admiral Tarkin meet me at the rendezvous. Yes, sir, Commander Tup replied. 
The Emperor found his way back up to the landing deck where the Naboo cruiser had landed, but Padme wasn't there with it. As the medical droid approached Yoda and Senator Bail Organa, even an emotionless droid couldn't hide something was wrong. We are trying everything we can, the droid said in an attempt at a somber tone. She sustained such severe stress that the damage to her heart may be irreversible. The added stress of being in labor are decreasing her odds of survival. Medical droids never did quite learn much in terms of bedside manner, despite every effort programmers have made. She's dying, Bail Organa stated as much as he asked. The rare gift of healing others, I have not, Yoda stated sadly. The children, our focus must be. Keep them from the Emperor, we must. How do we hide twins from someone who can feel the Force? Bail inquired. Only the boy can he sense. The girl, surrounded by the light side of the Force she is. Blind, it would make darkness to look upon it. My wife and I have always talked of adopting a little girl. She will be loved with us. Hmm. Yoda pondered for a moment. To the one place the Emperor will never return. Tatooine. To his family, I will take him. Watch over him. I will. May the Force be with you, Master Yoda. May the Force be with you, my friend. Yoda returned to the Senator. So it is, in this alternate universe, written in the journal of the wills.